Hi, so I just wanted to make another video about receivers and senders and essentially explain uh, why a network synced variable could potentially be necessary depending on what you're doing. Um, inherently, you do not need to network sync your senders and receivers here, the, the values that they're affecting. If you're doing something like a facial animation or a little interaction that plays when your nose is booped or something because those are very quick little animations that don't need to be synced across um like if you join another world or if someone joins late because it's likely going to be off and you don't want to have these taking up parameters on your expressions list here um however there are scenarios where you're going to want to have your objects uh and your animations network synced depending on what you're doing um, for example, with my shield, I have a network synced bool that I actually use to sync my shield across the network. Now, right now, the beta is bugged, um, and a lot of uh, variables aren't actually being synced. Parameters aren't being synced across the network, even though they should be. Um, they're still getting desynced. I've t talked to 20 or 30 different people that have been having this issue with different things they've been doing. Um, but ideally, in the future, these will work properly uh, whenever we are using them for whatever animations we're doing. Um, but I'll give you an example. So I have my shield here, which I just have a small little buffer. Essentially, whenever my network synced um, boolean is true and my gesture right equals two, then it will play this force field animation that turns on my force field. This has an exit time of one. Because I want it to play entirely through the force field. I don't want it to pause part way through and then turn it off. Because it would look really weird and bad. Um, the reason I don't have these going back and forth directly. Is because the exit time that is needed on the transition out of these. Uh, makes it very buggy interacting with the on enter um, receiver. And so I just created a small buffer that just has an empty clip on it. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't have a time or anything on it. And this right here, this uh, transition, has no exit time, nothing. It's, it's nothing on it. And essentially, it's just a normal transition to turn off the shield. And then we're just doing the same thing to go back and turn the shield back on. You just get trapped in this loop. But what I'm doing is I'm using this network synced bool to tell the shield to be on or off. Okay, well, how do we make our, our float a network synced bool? Uh, if we go down... Let's find it right here so this is more complex and actually what I'll do is um, I'll show you a simpler version of what this is so this would technically be a much easier just on off toggle for your network synced pool um, your default waiting state has a parameter on it it's again just an empty clip there's nothing happening in the animation itself but it has a component on it, a parameter driver, that drives your network synced boolean to be turned off in its default waiting state. And then whenever our, uh, our float for bullet is greater than 0.95, it will transition to bullet networked. Again, empty clip, nothing happening with the animation itself. But it has a component on it, the parameter driver, that's driving our network synced boolean to the value of true very quickly it very quickly drives it to true and then again as soon as our bullet float transitions back down to less than 0.95 we go back to bullet weight which turns it off and essentially what this lets us do is for like bullet sound here um it lets us transition into our impact sounds so uh disregarding the, the shield nut here uh when bullet nut is true it will transition to our, our first bullet hit sound. And then it immediately transitions off, because remember, our boolean gets set, set to off immediately afterwards. So we get caught into this buffer again. And then whenever it gets set to true again, we go into our second impact sound. And so you can use this to actually network sync your sounds and uh, turning on your shield and things like that. Um, without having to use the float itself. The float, I would recommend you use it for something like doing facial animations where someone pats your head, 
and it triggers your happy face along with turning on purring and making your tail wag faster because these are animations that don't need to be uh synced across the network in terms of like swapping from lobby to lobby or someone joining late um if someone joins late and someone's in the middle of head padding you like say someone joins the the world while you're being head pat and they can't see the animation playing if the person that's head patting you just takes their hand off of your head for a second and then puts it back on they will see the animations playing so it's it's a little bit of a non a non issue or a smaller issue if it's something as small as like doing facial animations but for objects that you're wanting to be seen whenever someone loads into the world so say someone joins the world while i have my force field uh, enabled they will see it because of this network synced boolean telling them the information of what has happened before they joined the lobby and so that's why it's important to have network synced booleans for something like uh, clothing toggles or uh, maybe like weapon toggles or, you know, something like having a force field and things like that. Um, but your mileage may vary depending on what's happening. Now, this step down here to create a network synced variable might become entirely useless in the future. Um, if we get the ability to just use booleans themselves and ints because then you can just make the boolean uh, that you're using in here say say that this was instead of um, value one this was true or false right so whenever shield r so on enter shield r gets set to true instead of one because it's a bool instead then what you can do is because we're not wanting to fill up our parameters list with floats here um, because that limits our memory. But if it's just a Boolean, that's okay. So then you can network sync these without having this extra step of having to make your float trigger an animation that parameter drives your Boolean to true. Because you've already got your Boolean, so you can just set this to true and have this in your parameters list as a synced variable. So hopefully in the future we get the ability to actually just have network synced bulls themselves uh, or uh, contact driven bulls themselves as well as ints because that will make this uh, just one last step and make it easier for people to do. But I just wanted to make sure that people had a clarification that for things like facial animations um, and like head pats and just smaller things that don't like if you just sit down and think about, you know, whether or not if someone joins late, are they going to be out of sync with this animation? If yes, then you should probably try to network sync it by doing something like this here. If not, then you can just use the floats and not take up any parameters on your, your expressions list. Uh, your mileage is going to kind of vary depending on what you're doing. Like if you're toggling on a baseball bat that has bonking, you would probably want to sync that up with a network synced variable with like a Boolean. Um, because if someone joins late and you have the bat in your hand toggled on, they're not going to see it. So uh, you'll you'll just have to kind of determine based on what you're doing, um, what needs to be network synced like this and what does not need to be network synced. But I just wanted to make sure because my last video didn't clarify this, that people understood the difference between what should be network synced and what doesn't need to be.